Hi everyone, Chemist here, and today I'm actually going to be going over a piece of hardware. And it's the PS Vita. Uh, I have the black slim model. You can tell the difference between the PS Vita slim and the OG PS Vita. Uh, one easy way, oh, the looks of course, but the other way is the charging port. This is a micro USB as opposed to a proprietary charger that the original one had. But this is, as of right now, the PS Vita is the best option for handheld emulation. The reason is you it, it's very, very comfortable to hold, which is not something you can easily say about other options. You have both the option for a very nice joystick and a D-pad. The buttons are nice and tactile, and they do not feel cheaply made. And you also have some shoulder buttons as well for, for use in Game Boy Advance ROMs. Now, I've had a PSP Go. Uh, if you guys have never seen a PSP Go, you could Google image it. You can, you know, it's it's definitely way more portable, a lot more slim. You can actually fit it in a pocket, you know, of like pants and stuff. The problem with it is the screen is nowhere near as high resolution as the PS Vita Slim or the original PS Vita. Now, the original PS Vita has an OLED screen, so it is really the the absolute nicest screen resolution. Uh, but it is heavier. The PS Vita Slim, not only is it slimmer, but it uses plastic in a lot of places that the PS Vita original used uh, some aluminum. So it weighs a little more. Um, so you know you get a trade-off. And then also you can use a micro USB to charge the PS Vita Slim, which you cannot do with the original PS Vita, which is why I went with the Slim. Now, if you want to use this for hacking, first off, you've actually got to hack it. Um, so the hack is called um, Hinkaku. And if you guys want, uh, I, I'll make a tutorial on how to do that for you guys if you're interested enough, but there's already tutorials out there, and it is, it is one of the easiest hacks that you can do on a system. What it does is it gives you access to molecular shell. Now, the PS Vita does have an SD card slot, but the problem is the PS Vita uses a proprietary SD card. It's not like a SanDisk one. So you can't simply put this into a computer and get access to the SD card root and just throw ROMs and emulators on there and just plug it back in and everything just work, you know. What you have to do is you have to install this molecular shell, which is a workaround. What it does is the molecular shell is an FTP. For those of you who don't know what that is, an FTP is a file transfer program. That's all it stands for. And what it does is it creates a local broadcasted Wi-Fi network from the device itself. So you'll launch Molecular Shell and you'll activate it by pressing the select button over here. And you'll start broadcasting a small local network from the PS Vita. You can then use your phone or your computer to connect to that network because it gives you the IP address. Um, you can connect directly to it with a program called FileZilla, and then that will show the root of your computer and the root of your PSP to side by side, and you can transfer emulators and ROMs to your PS Vita over that wireless network. You turn it off when you've done that, you install the uh, emulators through Molecular Shell, and then you open the emulator to open the ROM. Now, I have the MGBA emulator on here for Game Boy Advance. You can get access to RetroArch on this as well. You can get Homebrew, RetroArch, all sorts of other stuff. But MGBA is the best for Game Boy Advance emulation because the picture is much more crisp as compared to Homebrew or RetroArch. Also, the sound in RetroArch is nowhere near as high quality as the sound in MGBA. So once you've done that, you can just simply launch MGBA, right? And then uh, you can see here, I have Pokemon Crystal running, but that just isn't any normal Pokemon Crystal. It's my Pokemon Crystal 2.0 ROM hack that I made. So this will work with traditional GBC ROMs, GBA ROMs, Game Boy Color, uh, or Game Boy, just regular Game Boy. But it'll also work with ROM hacks. So let's say you wanna play Pokemon Liquid Crystal. You can do that, you can launch it. And the reason this is so great is because you can press the triangle button and you have full emulator control, okay? I mean, you can you can load a state, so we can load my save state one, you know, and, uh, and I'm in Sprout Tower, Pokemon Crystal 2.0. You can see that this is my ROM hack because I already have a Larvitar, 
I've got a Starmie that's traded, so it'll level up quicker. I've got uh, a Shiny uh, starter because I, you know, greatly increased the odds of running into a Shiny Pokemon. Um, and then what uh, the benefit is, is since you get full access to that emulator uh, control system, you, you, you can remap all your controls, you can control the frame rate and everything like that. So I, I mapped the left bumper to, to speed up. So you can see that this is speeding up, you know. Um, so we can just, yeah, I can hold that down and then um, I'll, I'll do this battle super, super quick. Bring out my shiny Cyndaquil and we'll just ember it. And there we go, he fainted. And zoom back group level seven, okay. Um, and this is, you know, I, I I have the option to use a joystick or a D-pad. Um, so you just you you get a lot of value in this system. Uh, there are other options as well. There's the KGB one hundred and one uh, system. I actually bought that off Mastrop. the The problem with that is, uh, I. I could never get any of my, my ROMs to, to save their save states. The, the saves would always corrupt, and so I couldn't trust it. And there's no point in using something you can't trust. If you can't save a Pokemon game, like Pokemon Crystal, I mean, that easily has, like, 60 hours of, of playthrough time um, to, uh, of stuff to do. So um, you got to be able to trust it. This one, you can have up to 10 save states. The actual in-game saves also work as well. So I mean, you, you, there's no there's no guesswork about this system. Uh, so if you want to pick up one of these for yourself, you can usually sign, find a whole bunch of PS Vitas for sale on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or Craigslist. You know, the important thing is that you have the person selling go into system and system info and take a picture for you. And it needs to be system software version 3.60 or under. If it is above firmware version 3.60, you cannot um, install emulators on it. it there, there's absolutely zero ways to downgrade firmware on a PS Vita. You abs it is impossible. You cannot do it. Sony blocked it. So if you want to use a PS Vita for emulation purposes, it has to be firmware 3.60 or below. If it's below, there is a way to connect to a specific DNS server and selectively upgrade to firmware 3.60. It's also very simple. I did it last week for a friend of mine. It's extremely doable. If you guys want me to, I'll make guides on how to, to do this. It's just there's so many out there that... Uh, I, I don't think any of you will have any problem doing this. Um, so this, in my opinion, this is the best way. There's, I mean, if you if you launch MGBA again, right, you can see how extremely crisp this image is. It is extremely nice looking. Um, it looks much, much nicer than the screen on the PSP Go. And if you go on eBay and try to, buy, try to buy a PSP Go, you're already going to be spending somewhere around $100. So I don't understand why you wouldn't put that money towards a PS Vita. Because if you can find someone on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist um, selling one of these at that low firmware, odds are they don't know why you want that firmware so badly. And they're just selling it thinking it's a regular PS Vita. So you can usually get... I, I got this one for $80. Uh, the seller just uh, was just trying to get rid of it, and, and, and they had no idea what emulation was. I didn't care about it. And so I, that, that's a steal. I've been wanting something like this for quite a while. Other options for you to do are you can, if you are a traditional hardware stickler, you can buy a Game Boy Advance SP, and it's important if you want traditional hardware to buy the AGS 101 model because when you do that, you get a fully backlit screen that is extremely high resolution. It, it, it's very crisp as well. Um, I think the PS Vita is definitely like a sharper image, but that would get you a backlit screen on traditional hardware. And then you could purchase something like the um, EverDrive. Um, so if you guys want in a separate video, I can cover the uh, EverDrive for you. But this 
has an SD card slot and it allows you to load ROMs for Game Boy and Game Boy Color onto this and just slide it into the cartridge slot of traditional hardware and let you play ROMs on there. Like I've, I've been able to play my ROM hack on uh, traditional hardware, which is uh, extremely awesome. But the problem with that is you don't get the ability to, to speed up emulation. So the only times I ever use emulation speed up features is when I'm grinding battles, trying to level up my Pokemon um, for like a gym or a specific uh, Elite Four battle, or when I'm hunting shinies. Um, I, I really like to listen to the music and um, enjoy at the regular, you know, emulation speed, the, the game. Um, and uh, there was a way I sped up most normal gameplay in my ROM hack. If you guys have been following my videos, you know I added an instant text speed in Pokemon Crystal and I also added the running shoes. So that way you can speed up parts of the game that aren't as important without affecting the music because I really like to listen to the music gameplay. So um, I only like to use the speed up feature just when I'm grinding levels or hunting for a shiny. So that's the benefit of using this. You get access to a joystick that's extremely high quality or a D-pad, uh, which not a lot have. And the screen is extremely high resolution. The screen's also touch screen, um, but I don't use the touch screen very often. Um, so uh, I think this is way better than the Android phone because Android phones don't have physical buttons. These are very tactical and there's just not quite anything like holding a, a system that feels like a Game Boy. Uh, I mean, this, honestly, this, this is the Game Boy that Nintendo should have made. Nintendo should have made a an emulator, a handheld emulator. I mean, I, so many people would buy it. And uh, it's better than using Virtual Console on Nintendo DS, because first off, um, the, the screen resolution and size are bigger. And then on top of that, you get full access to the emulator. So if you're a person who just really hates how slow Pokemon games are in general, you can, you can fast forward the whole thing the whole time. You just don't get emulation speed on a... Uh, on traditional Game Boys, and then especially if you want to play ROM hacks like Pokemon Liquid Crystal, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal ROM hack, you just don't get that option on the DS. Um, so I just think this is a way better option for, for in handheld emulation. And on top of that, the PSP has stopped being manufactured by Sony, so if you want to get third-party controller handles, grips, and stuff like that for the PSP, uh, Amazon still carries them, and they're ridiculously cheap. Like, this... Um, this specific one is an external battery. You can charge this controller and it has the same size battery as the PS Vita. So you literally double your battery size and then now you have a controller-like grip and it is extremely comfortable to hold. Um, and so, I mean, you can pick these up for like $15 off Amazon because there's just not many people buying new PS Vitas. Um, I personally think if you are a fan of Pokemon, or ROM hacks in general, like Pokemon Liquid Crystal, my ROM hack I made, there's Pokemon Polish Crystal made by Ranji, which is probably one of the most immersive ROM hacks ever made, or like Pokemon Red Plus um, Plus. This is a no-brainer. This is absolutely the way to go. You can buy other em handheld emulators like the GPD and stuff like that, and they're more powerful and everything, but like they're really expensive and you, you just don't need that much power to run Game Boy emulators. You just really don't. Uh, I even have a Nintendo Switch firmware 1.0. When I bought my Switch, I refused to update it because this PS Vita has taught me if you've ever bought anything that you think could run emulators sometime in the future that you want hacked, you should never upgrade the, the software because the earliest softwares are always the ones that have exploits. So even if and when that, that Switch is hackable and I'm able to get emulators on it as well, the PS Vita is is, is better. It, it, it's a better size. It's more comfortable to hold. The screen is still huge to where you're never going to be squinting. The resolution is phenomenal. Um, the Switch is nowhere near as comfortable to, to hold, um, and the battery life on this PS Vita is better for me than, than my Switch is. The screen's just so much bigger, and when you are like playing um, a crystal game, um, you know, you can you can make it fit the whole screen, but then it's stretched and weird. And I always play the large version of the square to, to maintain resolution. Um, but the thing is, the the Switch's screen, like so much of it would stay black, but still lit because it's not an OLED panel. So you'd be wasting a lot of battery. I, I, this is definitely the, the way to go, in, in my opinion. Uh, you can get these pretty cheap. 
Um, now the only time you can't really get these cheap is this PS Vita Slim also comes in a glacier white, a red, and a aqua blue. Now the aqua blue looks dope. It looks very, very good. But if you want an aqua blue PS Vita on the correct firmware, the only real place you can get it is eBay, and those people know why you want that firmware. And so you, you pay to, to get access to that one. They, they run above easily over $300, and that's even if you can find one. So uh, I tried to buy a Aqua Blue uh, new PS Vita Slim from Amazon. It was listed as new, but the problem is, if it was new, it'll never have been connected to the internet. So it should be well below uh, firmware 3.60. When I got it in the mail, I opened it, didn't connect it to the internet, turned it on, it was on firmware 3.65. So these people were, were it was false advertising. If, if, if it was, if it was truly new and never touched, no one would have ever connected it to the internet and the PS Vita would have never had the opportunity to update its firmware. So these people bought it from Japan or something like that thinking it was new and, and it wasn't. And the box also had no plastic sealing or anything like that. It could have very, very easily just been opened and then like used and just cleaned very well. So luckily Amazon has extremely good uh, return policies. But yeah, I thought I'd cover some hardware for you guys. Uh, this is by far the best way to play emulators handheld. Um, it is just, the, the screen is just after this world and the battery life is great. And the price to enjoyment ratio is just so high. Like I, I, I recommend this to easily 10 out of 10 to anyone. In my, in my eyes, this is the perfect way to go. Um, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Uh, I just thought I'd take a break from making walkthroughs and show you some hardware. Uh, but I definitely think picking up a PS Vita and the proper firmware in 2018 is one of the best choices you can make for, for Game Boy and Nintendo um, handheld emulation. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.